Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over today's MMA card from a betting perspective, and I'm also going to give some updated takes on the DFS slate, because there's been quite a bit of fight cancellations and other shenanigans um, that do require me to make a couple of changes to how I'm going to approach the slate, not to mention the fact that it is now an 11 fight slate as opposed to 13 or 14, which obviously changes the entire approach. And we'll get to that at the end. But uh, apologize for the late uh, dropping of this video. I'm actually away, but I am taking the time to do this for you guys. One other thing as a, a little bit of a disclaimer, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to bet any of these myself. I am going to try, honestly, but I'm not allowed to bet using DraftKings from where I am. Um, so uh, I'm either going to have to try to get a get on bet online or can actually, I'm at a place that they do have live betting, but I don't think they even take UFC here, but I am going to try. Um, if that, uh, influences the, my confidence, the confidence in my selections, I apologize. But again, usually in every other time I will bet exactly what I'm recommending. I don't know if I can get that done this time. But I promise you this, that if I can get action down on whatever I am describing, I am going to. And again, the rules are are going to be as follows. If I can, in fact, get the action down, I will be betting exactly one unit on every fight. And again, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care about that here. Uh, and for me, one unit is $180, 10 times high, which for those of you who know what that means, uh, very, very lucky. Um, and obviously the same uh, amount, uh, one unit per fight, betting every fight, none of that is particularly great money management, but uh, that's what we're doing. The other thing is that uh, we are going to presume that we go to 0 and 10 on our first 10 fights because we are very contrarian. So what we'd like to do is in the 11th fight, uh, the main event, try to do something that uh, pays at least 10 to 1. And uh, we'll just kind of uh, get going. Again, we, we we don't pretend here to know more than the public about how these fights are going to go. But we are able to do is figuring out where the public narrative is being funneled which means that we are being able to figure out which is the, the 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 accepted narrative, which is essentially the overbet narrative. So what we're trying to do is is fade stuff, find reasonable opportunities of things that is just ignored by the public, and we've been doing extremely well with that. Uh, for those of you who were on Trevor Peak by decision two weeks ago, I mean, who who had that? You know, it's uh, but you know, it, that's exactly the point. I mean, some, the, the, the way MMA works is people, especially when you have had two weeks to think about it, like this week, they just get completely drawn into only the one result. And MMA is ripe with chaos, and that's not the way it works. So uh, I'm not saying that what we're going to be recommending is the most likely outcome. As a matter of fact, it almost certainly is not. But I have to believe that these are all kind of inherently good values, nonetheless. Let's get started. First of all, we have Clay Fernandez versus Mark D. Casey. And Mark D. Casey has been kind of uh he's been kind of well known to have been he used to be a a kind of a wild striker and now he's become kind of a boring wrestler, sort of. He's someone that takes the dude down and doesn't really do much with it. Um and and Fernandez is, from what I've heard, a very aggressive striker. He'll kind of go for it. So basically, Fernandez's path to victory is going to be more KO. So uh, that's obviously something we can't bet because that's what everybody believes. And Dia Casey's path to victory is probably going to be a long, boring decision. So we can't bet that either. So the only thing we could really do is either go Fernandez by decision or Dia Casey inside the distance. So we're going to take a look and see what these, what these are here. Fernandez... Uh, by decision plus 500. Oh, uh, you have to try that. So that's what I would do. I, I'm going to recommend Hernandez by decision plus 500. Okay, moving on. We have Eduardo Moro versus Montserrat Canejo Ruiz. So uh, this one is pretty well set on what's going to happen. Mora is going to basically just assault uh, Montserrat Ruiz. Ruiz has nothing off her back. So Mora is either going to get a, a submission or a KO and run her over. So those are the things that we are really just not allowed to bet because that's what everybody is betting, which means that they're overvalued. The only thing you could do here, you could either play Mora by decision 
Or you could try Ruiz by plus 470. But the thing is, this money line is just is just been priced put up there so that no one will play either side. This is really just, you know, I, I actually feel as though Mora probably minus 650 is probably the side here. Um, because again, like, how can you play her minus 650? She's a fighter that no one's heard of. Um, but I think that what the bookies have done is just kind of made this kind of a prop only line. Um, so what we're going to try here is probably Mora by decision. So let's see what that would look like. Mora by decision plus 225. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Angela Hill versus Denise Gomes. All right. This one is probably going to be the sucker bet, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so Angela Hill is, is a great gatekeeper. She has that vet savvy. And this is a huge step up in competition for Denise Gomes. Um, Denise Gomes definitely goes for it. But the thing is that Angela Hill uh, never gets finished. So since she never gets finished, we'll probably bet on Denise Gomes to finish her. So Denise Gomes uh, inside the distance is going to be, what would that be? Winning method. Denise Gomes would be uh, plus 240 inside the distance. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Victor Petrino versus Modestus Bukowskis. So uh, Victor Petrino is just kind of this huge for the division. He's just really, really aggressive. He's just going to be all over Bukowskis, Bukowskis here. However, Bukowskis can be someone to take kind of, you know, the excitement out of fights. So if, if Bukowskis wins, it's probably going to be a decision. And if Petrino wins, it's probably going to be by KO or even submission. So obviously those are the things we can't bet here. I mean, if you really wanted to be saucy, you could play Bukowskis inside. But I think we're going to be a little more circumspect here. We're going to play Petrino by decision. So that would be what? Plus 250? Well, I really hope I can get action because I really actually do like some of these. So Petrino by decision plus the 250. Renat Fakwadinov versus uh, Dos Santos. Um, okay, so Fakwadinov is just kind of a just a chain wrestler, very, very aggressive. And you know, there are two ways this fight can go, honestly. So so either Fakwadinov can get these takedowns and just be all over and submit him, or or knock him out because again, he's he's very, very aggressive with his ground and pound. But DeSantos has a lot of experience. He's had some good wins. Is a big win over what turned out to be an amazing win over Benoit Saint Denis. Um, so I do see a lot of sharp people on the DeSantos side of this. So we really can't bet him <laughs> it's, uh, on the money line. I think the only thing again we could really do here is play Fakwadinov uh, by decision. So the idea is that he just just does enough with his takedowns to just kind of grind out a decision here. Um, so what is that? Fakwadinov by decision plus 165. Not particularly sexy, but that's kind of what I like. All right. Um, Elvis Brenner versus uh, Tanyan Krzyzewski. This is a, a replacement fighter. So he's coming off of seven days. Uh, set only. He's only there on seven days uh, notice. And Elvis Brenner is coming off a really, really big win as a big underdog. And he's from that shoot the box uh, uh, camp. And he's going to have that hair. People love bending guys from shoot the box. People love saying shoot the box. So we cannot bet on shoot the box. What we can only do is we can bet on Krzyzewski. Or the other thing you could do is play the fight to go the distance. Because one thing I am hearing a lot of is that this is going to be a lot of all action and things like that. Especially with Krzyzewski with, with uh, only on seven days notice. They're just going to kind of go after it. So we're probably not, not going to do that either. If you really wanted to get really super sexy, you could play Krzyzewski by decision. Imagine what that is. Hold on. Krzyzewski by decision has got to be like a billion to one. Let's see. Krzyzewski by decision is plus 750. Or, I mean, if you wanted, you could just, you could do what you're probably supposed to do is bet the fight to finish, uh, to go the distance. So first of all, you go over 1.5. Um what else is there to start? How do you, how can you bet this? Just, oh, just regular popular. Uh, fight props. 
Kim find it? Oh, to go the distance plus 200. So yeah, so you could just take this fight to go the distance. I think that's pretty solid. Um, or if you want, again, you could play Krasuski by decision plus 750. I don't know exactly which one I'm going to do. It depends, again, depends how things are going. Uh, again, I'm not going to be following fight by fight, I think. And I'm certainly not going to be around to put these things in in the middle. If I was feeling it, I might go for the plus 750. Um, but one of those two, I think, is is pretty wise. What well, wise? It's pretty stupid, but I think it's good value. All right. Um, moving on. Rodolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. Very binary fight. I love when people say binary fight. When it's something, a fight is completely binary, that means that there are more ways than the binary outcomes. So essentially, it's either Vieira going to wrap up Petrosian because Petrosian has incredibly poor takedown defense and get a submission, or Petrosian is going to just fight off the takedowns and just beat him up on the feet and win the decision. So these are the things that, again, you cannot bet. You can't bet Vieira by submission. You cannot bet Petrosian by decision. The only thing you can really bet here, I think, is either Vieira by decision or Petrosian inside the distance. And I think both of those are pretty reasonable outcomes. So let's see what those what those prices are. Um, Petrosian, Vieira by decision is plus 600. Wow. That's certainly better, I think, than than Petrosian inside the distance. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I think we'd have to try that. Vieira, get the takedowns. Just not good enough to get the submission, but still good enough to control him for at least two rounds and hold on for round three, plus 600. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go right to the freaking bankruptcy court. We have no chance. All right. Uh, Kyle Barajo versus Abus Magomedov. Um, all right, so Magomedov is coming off of a uh, performance where he was really, really good in round one against Sean Strickland and then completely gassed out. And then you have Kyle Barajo, who's very, very patient. You know, he'll, he'll fight off all of the, you know, the, the stuff in the first round, hopefully, and just just get his takedowns and, and either grind out a boring decision or possibly get the submission. So essentially, those are the two, only two outcomes that are possible. Have Magomedov in round one or Bal Barajo late or decision. So if those are the only ones possible, those are the ones we can't bet. So which of these can we do here? We could either play Magomedov by, is it Magomedov? Abus Magomedov by decision, or we could do maybe Barajo round one. Because that's definitely something that people are not looking at. Let's take a look at this. Let's see. First of all, Baralho round one plus 650. Wow. Or Maga Madoff by decision plus 800. Both of those look pretty cool. You know, we're going to try the Maga Madoff by decision. Just have him keep it on the feet, you know, maybe fight off takedowns for one round and come back. And and hopefully the, the judges just kind of, you know, are, are anti these wrestlers that don't really do much with their with their takedowns. And if all Barajo does is try to go for submissions and not get them, maybe that's not good enough to get a decision. So Mega made off by decision plus 800. Well, this is real. We're really going to go 0 and 10 this week, aren't we? We really better find something in that last fight. Okay. Um, Rodrigo Mont Nascimento versus Dantel Mays. All right. This one, this one's not going to pay much, but this is just way too easy. So Nascimento against Dante Mays, they, they've they've had this fight before. You know, this is a rematch nobody wanted. Nascimento handled Mays pretty easily. So there's really just no reason why this fight should go any differently. So we're gonna take Dante Mays. Um, I have no opinion on the on the outcome. It's just gonna be on the on the method, but it's just gonna be Dante Mays plus the whatever it is, 140, something like that. Let's see. Dante Mays plus 164. That's good enough for me. All right. Um, Gabriel Bonfim versus Nicholas Dalby. Okay. We're not going to play Bonfim in round one because that is definitely the, 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 the chalk in construction, right? Bonfim just goes for the submission like he always has, tries to knock him out, gets a submission one way or the other, gets him out of there round one. That's way too, way too hyped, way too overvalued. 
The other thing that people might be trying is Bond theme round two. Um, so we can't do that either, really. And a couple of takes I've heard from pretty sharp uh, customers is that if, in fact, Bond theme doesn't get there in the first round or two, he could gas and Dolby actually might be live for either a decision or like, say, round three. But people are kind of afraid to bet Dolby by decision because they're with Brazilian judges. I will throw one bet in here that I, I hate to do this, that I'm not going to do. Maybe I will. So one thing you could do in this, and this is this is unfortunately way too logical, okay, is the narrative or the the, the way the fight could go is Bon Fiam just totally dominates him round one and gets a 10-8 round. And then gases, and then Dalby wins round two and three, and gets a and it's a draw, and you can get fifty to one on that. I have to say that listen, I know my rules. I can only bet one thing a fight. I'd hate to this be the only thing I bet on this fight, but that is that's a pretty logical outcome if you want to know the truth. Ugh, am I going to do this? I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I promise you, it's I promise you, this is good value. Um, but it's not good value in the way the things I think about are good value. I just think it's good value because it can actually happen, and it's fifty to one, like every other draw prop is. So I do think that that's probably a good a good bet. But for the purposes of this contrarian breakdown, we can either play probably it's Bond Fiend by decision. Okay, one of these guys actually by decision. And since Dolby is, boy, who is less likely to get a decision? I guess that's how we look at this. So Dolby by decision plus 750, Bonfim by decision plus 330. I mean, it's possible that Bonfim just just beats him, but Dolby's tough enough to avoid all the all the, uh, all the the stuff. I don't know. This is going to be really tough to figure out which one I'm going to do. I honestly don't know. Um, but for the purposes of this, we will go um, – Bon theme by decision plus 330. But that draw prop, as well as this, this, this Dolby by decision, is both very live. All right. Um, okay. We have, is that it till the main event? Are we done? Yes. We are now at Jalton Almeida versus Derek Lewis. And if we want, we could just kind of recap the atrocious plays that we made leading us to this point. Um, and that is going to be. Uh, Fernandez by, uh, what do we say? Fernandez by decision over D. Casey. I mean, how is that going to happen? I mean, D this goes to distance, going to be D. Casey. Got all kinds of takedowns and stuff. It's a stupid bet. So we're doing it. Uh, Mora, you know, obviously she can't get, you know, this is, this is not going to, this is going to finish in round one or two. Ruiz just, just doesn't have it in her. Uh, this fight's never got, get in the distance and we will just try it. Take Mora in. We will take Mora by decision because we're gluttons for punishment. Angela Hill never gets finished. So we're taking Gomes to finish her. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, again, chapter 11 city. Uh, Petrino, you know, just going to be all over Bukowskis. If this does go the distance, it's going to be Bukowskis to be able to manage this fight. So we are taking Petrino by decision because we're gluttons for punishment again. Fakradinov against DeSantos. Um uh, once again, same thing. If this does go the distance, the, the common narrative is that it's because DeSantos is able to keep it on the feet and give that kind of vet lesson. So we will go for the anti-vet lesson and take Fakradin off by decision. I forget what it was, plus 230 something. Brenner, shoot a box. We have to fade shoot a box because people like to say shoot a box too, too much. So we like either the fight to go the distance or uh, Krasuski by decision. Krasuski by decision was plus 750. I think I might go for that one or just by, you know, fight to go the distance plus 200. Uh, Vieira Petrosian, again, this fight will either be Vieira early or Petrosian late. At least that's what people think. So probably the underappreciated value is going to be Vieira by decision. So we're going to try that. Uh, Baraljo Magomedov. Ma Magomedov is basically going to be round one or bust here. Otherwise, P P P uh, Chow Baraljo with his high fight IQ is going to just manage the fight and win the decision or get the late submission. So we will take Maga Madoff to keep it on the feet and get that uh, decision. Nascimento, Dantel Mays, I don't know why they're running this fight again. And I can't imagine why it would be any different than the first one. So since we can't imagine it, we're going to bet it. Uh, Dantel Mays uh, plus whatever this 160. 
So now we're at Jonathan Almeida versus Derek Lewis. Um, just about the most binary fight, you know, you can imagine. Either Derek Lewis knocks him out in the first round or Jalton Almeida gets probably a first round submission. That's or maybe a knockout. Almost all of the money is coming in on those two specific props. So those are out. What can we do though to fade that and get 10 to one? Let's see what's out there. Okay. So let's see. Um, Almeida by decision plus 2,200. 22 to 1. Come on, big boy. Can't you just hang on for five rounds? I don't know. I don't know if he could do it. I don't know. Derek Lewis isn't winning a decision. So him plus, see, this is ridiculous. Like, like if this goes to decision, it's going to be because Almeida was able to get his takedowns and for whatever reason couldn't finish him. Can't imagine that being the case, but so if anything, I am taking Almeida by decision. So that's one possibility. Let's take a look at other stuff. Um, we could, wow, this is kind of fun. We could do Almeida by KO in round two plus 1400. So this would be not a submission. It would be a ground and pound specifically in round two. Wait, what about this one? What about Derek Lewis in round two plus 2,200? Well, I'll tell you this, though. So there are a lot of possibilities to gamble here. So Derek Lewis round two plus 2,200. Or we have Almeida round two plus 2,200. Is it possible Almeida can flex and get around a KO? Is it possible Derek Lewis can survive round one and still have enough in him to get a KO in round two? It's going to be one of these. And if, if I wasn't such a wimp, I would just play them both because that does get me the 11 to 1. But for the purposes of this, and again, this is for those of you who've been following this. There have been like four straight main events that I was on the right 20 to one shot and I talked myself off it in the last five seconds. So maybe what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to randomize this somehow. What? And just try to figure this out. Lewis round two or Almeida round two. We could just again, bet the fight to finish round two. Maybe we should just do that. No, because it's got to be specifically by KO. I mean, this is a disaster. But we're we, we're going to go with Almeida by TKO in round two. Oh, that's only plus 1,400? Yeah, okay, we'll do that one. Almeida round two plus 1,400. If you wanted to, you could put Lewis round two plus 2,200. All right, that will do it. Uh, now, as far as the DFS slate goes, okay, now again, I'm sorry if you had to wait so long to get to this. It's a really it's it's a big difference, okay? Because there are eleven fights on the card now, and the way you have to approach an eleven fight card is significantly different, okay? Um, it's not just about making making the the, the good plays. Um, so I just want to update you on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to update you on the Bremer Krasuski fight because again, we didn't really know what the lines were, so. You have a situation where Bremer has quite a bit of line value here. Um, he's like a plus 150, and he's only 8,200. And he's got a pretty decent inside the distance line. So according to the optimizers and all the metrics, it's a, it's like a smash play. Okay. Um, as a result of that, I do recommend you get overweight on Krzyzewski here. Just because it's an 11-fight card and you got, have to get leverage in a couple of places, and this is one of the things I look for is to take a smash play and take the other side of it if that other side is at least decent. And I think the Krasowski play, even though the line value is kind of crappy, I think the inside the distance line is good enough. 
that I think that the leverage is worth it. So I do like the Krzyzewski side, especially in 150. Um, in addition to that, this Rodolfo Vieira fight, where it used to be, this is just kind of like the smash best play on the board. I mean, it sort of is, but because it sort of is, uh, you have to just play the other side of this in 150. I mean, Petro Petrosian is going to be so low owned. Um, he would be low owned on his own anyway. But now that Vieira is going to be extremely popular, you just have to play some of it to get a little bit of leverage there. Okay. And this is what you have to deal with in 11 fight cards. If you're playing, you know, trying for the lottery is you can't just make the best plays. You have to find leverage somewhere. Um, and, and, and the other thing that I would mention, I guess, as far as an update is that when you're trying to think of which underdogs to play, like, especially the, um, you know, the cheap ones, the way I like to think about it is that if you don't like any of them, and they're all kind of bad this week, what I'd like to do is pick the ones that are facing the fighter that have the most ownership, okay? Just because in case one of them does happen to win, you want to get that type of leverage, um, and that's the way I'm thinking about it. So when you're looking at these $9,400 fighters between, you know, uh, what what's her name? Uh, whatever the, the woman's name is, Mora. Um, Monster, you know, she, she's going to be pretty popular. Um, but, and and then you have Barajo is not going to be that popular, even though I do like Abus and I'm going to be over the, over, over the, over the field on him. Um, I, I, here's the problem. I think his path to victory is much more DraftKings friendly, but the leverage you got you get isn't as much as some others. So we, I do, I am playing a lot of him. But I want to just throw in somebody I didn't like earlier because it was a 14 fight card. Um, I think Dalby is very much in play on 11 fight card. I think his, you know, his, his money line's awful. His his win condition isn't great either. But I think there's enough variance with Bonfim being, you know, just having two short victories, and the fact that he's going to be his metrics look so good. He's going to be so incredibly popular. I think Dalby's just kind of worth a shot. Yeah, that's the best I can describe this. Uh, and the other one, uh, again, Almeida is going to be really popular. Lewis is obviously a great play because he's he's got a strong inside the distance line, and he also has you know a lot of leverage over Almeida. The only problem is he might be high owned. Um, so those are kind of the th I think those are the three cheapos I like the most though. I think Lewis and uh, Dalby and Magomedov. Those are the three cheapos. So those are those would be my my the the and those would be my additions to the previous breakdown. And then like these other guys that I might not have wanted to play. I mean, you just kind of have to get in there now. Like, like Dante Mays is going to be low owned. I think you have to probably play him, you know, um, for example. Um, and I guess that's pretty much all I have uh, as far as uh, an addition to the DFS breakdown, but I thought it was worth doing as long as I was doing the betting breakdown. Anyway. Okay. Good luck everybody today. And again, sorry for my absence. Uh, I'll be back probably in the next couple of days. Bye-bye.